Hello and welcome back to the next video in this Intro to Solidity Programming Basics. In the last video, we covered the Remix IDE, basic contract syntax, and variables and data types. Today, we're going to look at functions in Solidity and write a basic voting smart contract. When writing our code, we need a way to write and retrieve values. And we achieve this in Solidity with getter and setter functions. In Solidity, a setter is a function that modifies the value of a variable or modifies the state of the contract. In our case, this could be incrementing a vote count. A getter is a function that returns a value, such as the number of votes. Something that's really important to writing functions in Solidity is understanding visibility. Visibility modifiers determine the level of access to variables and functions in your code, which is necessary to protect which smart contracts can see the data of a specific contract. There are four types of visibility modifiers in Solidity, private, internal, external, and public. A function that is marked as private can only be accessed from inside the contract where it's defined. An internal function can be accessed within the contract where it's defined as well as its subclasses. A public function can be called internally or it can be accessed from other smart contracts. And a function marked as external can only be called from other smart contracts outside where it's defined. We're going to see examples of all this in the smart contract we're about to write, so let's go ahead and go back over to Remix. We're going to create a very simple voting contract. So I've removed everything here from the ballot.soul file because we're actually going to make this a little bit more simple and break it down step by step. We're going to assume any address can vote. So we're not going to bother with delegating voting rights to specific addresses. And we're going to automatically increment a weight of one for each vote. So we won't assign a specific voting weight. We're also not going to worry too much about gas optimization at this point either. Since we'll be deploying to a test net anyway, we just want to see how we can create a proposal, click a button to vote for it and retrieve the number of votes. So we're going to go ahead and create a contract called ballot. And then we know we're going to need to be able to store each voter. So we know if they voted and the proposal that they voted for. So we're going to create a struct. If you remember from the previous video on data types, we're going to use struct here to create a voter type that contains a Boolean, whether or not they voted yet. Then we're going to do the same thing to create a proposal. And that's going to have a name or some way to identify the proposal and a count of how many votes the proposal has received. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we're going to create a variable to store the addresses of the voters, mostly so we can see a mapping example here. And we'll give it a public visibility so other contracts could access it. So remember, this will result in a key value pair. So you would be able to get the voter by the address key. Then we're going to need a proposals array. So we'll give it a type and make it public. Now note that we would not want to use a mapping here because we will need to iterate over this list of proposals. So we want to use an array. Okay, now we need to initialize a new ballot to choose one of the proposals. So we're going to go to create a constructor here, which is a special function that's used to initialize state variables in a contract. It's going to take an argument of an array of proposal names and we'll use the memory keyword here. And what that does is it stores function argument data and then it gets wiped after execution. So this is something that will consume gas, okay? So that's just something to note. Now, Solidity doesn't let you pass an array of strings in the constructor, at least not yet. So that's why we're using a bytes32 array here instead. I'm just going to paste in their for loop here to save some time. I think we all understand a for loop. It's just looping through the proposal names array that we give it and initializing a new object of the proposal type that we created up above with some default values and pushing that to our proposals array. So now we can finally make our actual voting function. This is going to be a setter function because we're modifying a vote count value, right? So it's going to take the index of the proposal we want to vote for as an argument. And for the sake of this example, we'll assume we know the index of the proposal we want to vote for. Obviously, you'd probably want to make a function to get you the list of proposals so you could choose the one you want. 
but we'll assume we already know that for now. So we're going to store this voter in a sender variable that's of our voter type that we defined up above. Here we'll use the storage keyword, which is similar to the memory keyword, except that this is a persistent storage on Ethereum. Okay, so this can use even more gas. And we'll use message.sender, which is a handy way in Solidity to access the address that's making the function call. So in this case, the address of whoever is voting. Then we'll require that this address is not an address that has already voted before. We'll set this voter has voted to true. They're voting for the proposal at the index we gave it. And then finally, we're going to get the proposal at that index from our proposals array, and we're going to increment the vote count property by one. Now, if we give it an index of a proposal that doesn't exist here, it's going to automatically throw and revert everything, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so now we want to be able to see how many votes our proposal has received. This is going to be a getter function. It's going to take the proposal index as an argument. Since it's read only, we can also actually mark this function with the view keyword, and we can say that it's going to return the vote count. So that's going to be an unsigned integer type. All right, let's head over to the sidebar and compile our ballot.soul file. The green check mark here means it compiled successfully, so we're ready to deploy. Now, remember our constructor function is expecting an array of bytes 32 values for our proposal names to vote on in order for this contract to execute. So we need to pass that in when we deploy it here. It doesn't matter what specifically we pass in since we don't have an actual proposal to vote on. So I'll just put an example bytes 32 value inside the array for now. And of course we could pass in as many of these as we want to. We'll click deploy. We can see that it was successfully deployed, and now we can interact with the contract. Now, if we want to go ahead and vote, watch what happens when we put in an index of one. It actually fails, right? Because there's only one proposal in the array right now, so we need to give it index zero. Now, if we put that index zero in total votes, we can see that our proposal has received one vote. So we know that our smart contract is working as expected. Now that we've written this contract, in the next video, we'll look at how to set up, use, and write tests in the hard hat development environment for professional Solidity developers, and how to run and deploy this contract using hard hat.